our 29th project was Tino Segal in 2014, February, at the Art Gallery of New South Wales. But before describing the project, I want to talk about how I saw the first work of Tino's and how I met him. It was the Berlin Biennale in 2006, titled Of Mice and Men. It was curated by Maurizio Catalan, Massimiliano Logioni, and Ali Subnoptic. It was one of the best Biennales I have ever seen. In fact, I would rank it the best. It was in Augustusstrasse, and on one end was a church, on the other end a cemetery. And along that street, maybe one kilometer long, art was displayed from private homes to gyms, to old stables, to a Jewish girls' school that was stopped during the war. It was a very odd mixture, but it really worked wonderfully well. And as I said, I was lucky to be there. I went along systematically looking at each uh, venue, and I came upon an old-fashioned dance hall. And in the middle of the floor, were two couples embracing each other, very much based on Rodin's kiss. But they were slowly moving about, changing the embrace. It was mesmerizing, quite hypnotic. And I watched it for a very, very long time. And I didn't know who the artist was, I read that it's Tino Segal. I knew the organizers of the Biennale and I asked them to explain to me who Tino was and they gave me a bit of a background. And I said, oh, I'd love to meet him and if possible, bring him to Australia. They said, he happens to be in Berlin. Uh, if you want to meet him, we can arrange a cup of coffee with him. He was a very engaging young man and I told him how much I liked the work and that a bit about our projects and what we do. And I wanted him to come to Australia. He said he would love to do something in Australia, but there's a problem. He doesn't fly. He's very conscious of his carbon footprint and he won't do anything to increase it. He will only travel by train or boat, he doesn't use a mobile phone, and he doesn't keep any archives, any records. He was very adamant that that's his way of operating. That's very much part of his art. So I said, all right, well, let me investigate what would be the fastest vessel to sail between Germany and Sydney. And when I went back to Australia, I found out, but there are, weren't too many and not very available. I couldn't convince him to fly. We were even looking to catch a train from Berlin, somehow through India to Indonesia and from Indonesia by boat to Sydney but it all became too complex for him. And he was in very high demand. Um, he was the youngest artist to represent Germany at the Venice Biennale in 2005, and again later on where he won the Golden Lion Award, the youngest person ever. But he said, look, I'd be happy to arrange for a work to be shown in Australia, so let's talk about it. We left it at that. Then in 2013, he was part of the 13 Rooms project. And 
We continued our discussion for the future. In his 2005 presentation at the Venice Biennale, he showed this work, this is so contemporary. He walked into the German pavilion, which was a very classical building with typical Greek columns. But as you walked in, you were more than greeted. You were accosted by three or four people who surrounded you and started to chant, to sing, this is so contemporary, this is so contemporary, this is so contemporary. And you didn't quite know what was happening, but they walked with you till you entered the hall of the pavilion. And in the end, after they chanted, this is so contemporary, they said, Tino Segal, and the date the work was con conceived. So I so thought, this is really fascinating. So then, I think it must have been in, still in 2013 or 14, I decided to purchase that work. Now, the way Tino works, nothing is ever written down. Neither his work, nor any agreement with galleries, nor any of the sale of his work. A representative of the gallery is there, there's a notary to swear an affidavit, but everything is verbal. And you have to memorize, I think, five points that are integral to the work and to the purchase. Such a long time ago, I don't remember it. I think I wrote it down at that time somewhere in the hotel room to make sure that I know what it is. I decided to donate the work to the gallery and it was performed for the first time in the vestibule. I was fortunate that Xavier Leroy, who was a good friend and tutor in dancing to Tino, was in Australia for 13 rooms, and he helped to audition and recruit the performers. And he had the assistance of a very experienced Australian contemporary dancer, Becky Hilton from Melbourne, who came up to Sydney. Now, again, she was an adherent of Tino. She wouldn't fly to Sydney, she caught the train because that's what Tino wanted. So very much by the rule books. Xavier Leroy was on the phone to Tino describing the vestibule and together they choreographed the piece which then Becky Hilton followed and trained the performers when it was going to happen. It took everybody by surprise. You walked into the gallery, into the enclosed vestibule, and there you were first greeted by a performer who wore the uniform of the security people of the gallery. And then there were three or four performers, all dressed in the uniform of the security guards, who surrounded you and again went through the hall, this is so contemporary, this is so contemporary, this is so contemporary. People were be bewildered. They didn't know what was happening. Uh, some, mainly elderly, complained bitterly that they came to see art, not pantomime. But generally, everybody else was taken by it. As nothing could be written, because on previous projects we published catalogues or pamphlets at least, we had a number of our staff as living catalogues who explained to people what was all this about. It certainly made the gallery come alive. And there was a lot of talk, controversy about it. My best memory of that project happened a couple of years later. 
I was walking to the gallery and a young couple was coming through the vestibule and they threw up their hands and chanted, this is so contemporary, so contemporary. So a temporary project which has nothing written down, no traces, but lives on in the memory of people. And that's really what our art project is about. It is temporary, but we hope that it'll live on in the memory of people.